Alright, so kicking off straight into the first question. Okay. You know, what goes into making a book? You know, there's obviously the printing, the editing, and whatnot, but what is your first step into making a book or an album? Okay, the first step is usually like some sort of um, some sort of spark, I guess, right? It's uh, it's something that happens very quickly for me. This is not for everyone. So for me, it's like a, a quick spark. Like a, that's the very first thing that happens, and that's it's not like anything big. It's not like a blueprint or anything. It could just be. Um, often it's like a theme that I might think of, or or uh, some sort of word that might start it off. You know, sometimes it's not even a word. Sometimes it doesn't even make sense. It's just a, a random word. You know, yeah. and uh, and sometimes I have an image. Like the, the book that I'm working on right now, I guess this would be like my, my fifth because I have another one that I'm almost finished. So this would be like my fifth novel, and it's the first one that I've done in Afghanistan. And it actually started off uh, with an image, like maybe 2008, a uh, long time ago. And it was mm-hmm. an image I had of this Afghan man holding his son, just kind of holding him over his shoulder in like a tent in the middle of Afghanistan okay. with candles. And I had that image, and for whatever reason, it came to me. And it was in the back of my mind, it was cooking, I guess, I kind of leave it there in the yeah. back for a while. And then now, in the last six months or so, I started writing a whole story around that, with that as one of the starting points. So usually, it, okay. just, it starts off with that quick spark, you know, and then after that comes the dedication, and the, the time, yeah. and the months, and the years. And all. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I first, you know, when I thought of, like, someone writing a book, it was just, like, sit down, start brainstorming, whatever idea that clicks, just start writing. I mean, that's, that's how we're taught in school, but yeah. I guess it's different from the way you write novels. Yeah, and it, I think it has to be different. Some some people do it that way, and a lot of them have success, uh, okay. and they're writers, and that's great for them. Uh, and they usually get an audience, because the majority of people like stuff that's easy to understand, and it's, like, A, B, C, D. And that's usually what you get when you brainstorm stuff as well, because you're thinking about it in that common sense way. But that's really not that's not really what art is supposed to be about. Art is supposed to be about something that goes beyond just the normal. So you you know, like I say, to to write the whole book anyway, you need to have that discipline, which is kind of like the the steady work. But without that uh, without that spark of subconscious uh, kind of magic that doesn't really make sense, then you're not really doing much to to bring any value to the world. You're just creating another one of these novels that are all over the place. There's a lot of books and a lot of them are very bad. So. Yeah. A lot of bad books in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. All right. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, you kind of answered this question already, but I'm going to just, like, rephrase it oh, yeah. more Fine. tailored towards yeah. you. So, uh, what is what inspired you to be a rock, uh, an author? Uh, you sound like you were going to say rock star. <laughs> rock yeah, no, yeah, I was like, rock star. But uh, yeah, what, what, what inspired you to be an author? Uh... Yeah, it was just it, kind of nothing, to be honest with you. You know, I always used to like writing when I was a kid. When I, when I first was young, I used to like writing, and I, and I enjoyed it. But I never thought that I would be a writer. I was never influenced by the idea in my head to be a writer. And I'm really glad that that didn't happen, because it probably would have been like an ego thing, where I was, I, yeah. you know, where I'd be like, oh, I want to be a writer, because writers you know, are this and that, and all those labels. For me, it was just something I enjoyed doing from a really young age, and I carried on doing it. It's that simple. So I was never inspired to be a writer. I don't even know if I am a writer. I just write, you know. That's that's what yeah. I know. I do what I know. Yeah. It's like uh, it's natural to me. It's like uh, it's like if you play basketball, that movement is natural. If you uh, if you drink water, you do this. For me, writing is like that. You just I, it's something that I I got into the habit of doing at an early age. I enjoy it, and I just do it without. There's not too much of this going on. Okay, all right. So it's not like a blueprint you follow. It's just something that happens. It's something that happens to you. And if it happens to you, then I think you're very lucky because everyone can get inspired from time to time. And I kind of feel like everyone could be a, a, a writer at one moment in their lives. And that's great because, you know, it happens to everyone sometimes where they feel inspired and they want to do something, whether it's a book or whatever it is. But yeah. the, important, the important thing is to hear that when it comes and to be able to follow it whatever wherever direction it takes you, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like... Having that aspect of being a writer, that's the most part. That's the most important part of being a writer. It just clicks. You know, yeah. it's not like something that you sit down and start doing. It's like you have to love to write to write. Yeah, and I yeah. think yeah, you have to be paying attention. If you're paying attention to life around you, uh, it'll something good will come out of you. But if you're not paying attention, and most people aren't, most people are, you know, these days, right? They're just here. Yeah. So if you're actually yeah. paying attention to the to the everything around you, all the energy, the people, the beauty, and everything, and the ugliness. It will come into you, and then eventually it'll come out in a nice way uh, if you make the space for it. But otherwise, uh, you're useless. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that makes perfect sense. So, I mean, uh, the next question is kind of iffy for me because 
the question is, what is your favorite book and why? But uh, oh, yeah. kind of going into my yeah my personal standpoint, right. I don't have a favorite book only because I'm very picky about what I tend to read. So and then when I when I get that certain book, I like all types of that, like mystery. I love mystery, so I start reading all types right. of mystery books, right. and I love every single one. So it's like I don't have I don't necessarily have a favorite book. So but what about you? That's cool. I think uh, that's probably a good sign that you're in that discovery mode where you want to just discover yeah. as much as you can from the whole genre or the whole thing. Uh, and I, you know, I think that's really healthy. Uh, I have a, a couple of favorites. I can't narrow it down to one, so I have quite a few. Okay. Um, and usually I'm more like that and like what you described it as in a sense of authors. Like if I like an author, if I feel like I get him and I like and I respect where he's coming from, I'll pretty much like anything that he writes. So I'm pretty loyal to okay. that. So there are some authors like a lot of the classic Russian authors like Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. I'll read pretty much anything that they write and I'll find a lot of value in it because they're important people. I think that I respect what they have to say. So yeah, there's the novel by Tolstoy called Haji Murat. That was his last novel that he wrote. A lot of people don't like it because it's like they don't consider it one of his classics, but it's actually, yeah. it's actually about Chechen freedom fighters and it kind of completely ties in with the Islamic culture of the East and, yeah. and mixing it with Russia. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the most beautiful books and I think as an Afghan I really can kind of relate to it on some pre prehistoric tribal level. Yeah. There's a lot of weird stuff going on, but it's, it's a great book. And uh, and then, yeah, and I think Dostoevsky wrote, uh, there's a Norwegian author called Karpe Vesas, who I really like, and my favorite English writer is called Somerset Moore. He is an amazing writer, and he's my favorite in England. Uh, so, yeah, I could go into it, but maybe it's not that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it is. It is. Exactly. All right, so leading into the fourth question. So why do you think literacy is important in our society? Why is being literate important? You you mean literally like being able to read and write, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's funny. It's a funny question to me because it's such a it, to me it's such a given, and I take it for granted. But I guess for a lot of people it's not given, right? And I think um, yeah, I think literacy is okay. Well, it's language, right? And uh, you, you know, like life is very rich. It's like I was saying earlier, when you look out and you see all these amazing things and you pay attention to it, I, like existence itself, waking up every day and being alive in the world, it's a very rich experience. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I feel like uh, if you have more ways of seeing it, more angles from which to see it, you're that much more able to decipher what's really happening. It's really about truth, right? Like understanding what is the real, what's real. And the more points of view you have, the more you're able to, um, the more you're able to really see from different angles and understand a, a more complete truth. So language is one of those angles, right? And, then, and if you know more languages, even better. Like I, I, you know, I've recently learned three or four different computer languages, and learning a computer language expands my mind. I feel like I, I can yeah. do things in a different way. Or you know, I speak a bit of Spanish and a bit of other languages, two other languages. When I hear how something is said or pronounced in this language, it might change my perspective. Like, oh, they put the verb before the object or the object before the verb. That means that they think this thing is more important than the action or the action is more important. So you get different ways of seeing humanity from understanding language. And literacy is like the first building block, right? It's speaking. Obviously, there's non-verbal there's non language as well, which is just as important. And, you know, that's what me a lot. It's like just reading body language. But literacy is... It's a building block, you know, it's like the main thing. You read, you write, and you're on your way after that. So it's a great feeling. Yeah, alright, yeah. I mean, to me, like you said, it's kind of a given. I came here when I was five. I, I grew up in America, so, you know, I, I was born basically at age five, reading, reading and writing. Yeah, you know, I yeah. knew how to read and write, but back home, literacy rate is like 20, 20, 28%, 27%. That's that's low compared to the United States where it's like 99. Like yeah. It's a given for us, but there, you know, it's like a group of people know how to read and write. Yeah. And I feel like you're right. If, if you know how to read and write, you can look at stuff in a different perspective. And sure. that, that's really important in, in the growth of a country or a society. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, going into the last question, uh, I feel like you already answered this, but I'm going to say it again. Well, yeah. What is the significance of writing a book? Uh, significance of writing a book is, oh, that's a nice question. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, if you write a book, you to me, it's a serious thing. It's not a, it's not a joke. Uh, most people, I realized this when I first wrote my first book in, in 2004 or 2005, whatever, when I was doing it, people looked at me different and they said, whoa, you're really doing that. And the most common response I would get was, oh, I've always wanted to write. 
I always wanted yeah. to write, and that stuck with me because I've been teaching creative writing since you know, since my second or third novel came out, I've become more active in teaching because I realized right in the first time when I did it that everywhere I went when I was traveling and writing my first novel, everyone looked at me in a different way and I saw that there was this desire for people to want to do what I was doing. And I realized that not everyone had the ability to do it. I don't know why I had the ability, but, you know, I just loved it and I was dedicated to it. But uh, for other people, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's, uh, you know... Yeah, I think it's, it's important. It's important to be able to do that. And if you can't do that, then find something else that you want to do. That's important. But a book is a huge deal. For me, when I look at all the crappy books that come out, I don't get just sad about that. I mean, it is sad because there's so much trash out there. But at the same time, you know, at the same time, like, um, for the people who know what good writing and good reading is and what an experience is to read a good book, then you're doing something that's timeless. You're doing something that's, that's really kind of like the deepest art form in some ways. Like, music is transient, it comes and goes, like film, you go and watch it in the cinema, you can maybe forget about it. Books touch a part of you, they're very personal, you hold them like this. Actually, I always think it's funny that you look like you're praying when you're reading a book, like, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I always think about that when I read uh, actual books, right? Uh, and when you hold them like that. So it's like, there's something going on with that, with the paper, with the, it's going right into your heart somehow, into your soul. If it's good, it's done right. And so, it's permanent, it's very powerful. Books have been around for a long time, and uh, there's something about them that's mysterious. And, uh, I don't know what it is, but yeah. it's, it's special. Got you. you no, you, you, you honestly answered that question. Uh, I feel like you couldn't... There, there's, there's two responses I usually get from, from answering that question. It's either the clear-cut response, or the response you gave me. And I feel like uh, if, um, this video that I'm making, it'll, it'll use your response more, only because of what you just said. If, if you know that the importance of a book, it's you gotta know how to read it. If, if you read it, like you said, you'll get inspired to do what you want to do. Like people came up to you and said, "I've always wanted to write." I mean, I've, I've told people that, right? You know, but I've never actually done it. I've right. never actually done it. So right. I feel like it, it. You have to start the initiative, and to get that initiative, it needs to be a spark. And reading a book might exi might be that spark. To yeah. Oh, that's true. It inspires you. Yeah. A lot of books inspire me when I read them, and then. Uh, you know, just, I just get energy from reading them, and after that, you know, I want to go out and do something completely different or write something. Yeah. It's just the energy of seeing that someone else did it. I mean, you know, the same is true for me. I didn't mean to use myself as the example because, you know, whenever I read someone else's work and I like it, the exact same thing happens to me. And I've written yeah. a lot. I've written a lot of books, like, and I'm still writing, but I still get just as inspired by reading something from someone else because it's it's just beautiful. You see someone doing something that you never thought possible to do or could write yeah. about. You know, like, what? He's writing about this? Really? That's the subject? And he's writing about that? I'm, I'm glued to the pages right here. It's amazing. And you keep yeah. reading it. And then, you, and then it expands your possibilities because everyone is interested in writing about something different. That's the cool thing. If it's done right, everyone is going to focus on something different. Uh, yeah. and, then, and then by doing that, everyone who reads it is like, oh, that's important too. Oh, that's important too. Oh, you could write about that too. Wow. And it just expands. It's all about expansion. You know, it's like, well, everything is expanding. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's perfect. That's, you're very true. I mean, I'm, I'm out of questions. Oh, okay. And you've answered all, yeah, you, you've answered all the questions. But, um, well, like I said, this video is basically for me to uh, signify the importance of an author in a book in our society. Like, like one of the questions says, like, without an author, there wouldn't be a book. Without a book, we wouldn't be educated. Education comes from a book. Right. Who writes that book? An author. An author right. who technically educates them also. I feel like I'm the, the, our society doesn't know the importance of that, and this yeah. video will really help it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, not showing it, I'm not showing it to other people rather than the 300 people that are going to watch it. No, that's fine. Sure. Fundraiser, but Show it to everyone. That, that's good. I feel like it's a nice message to share, and I think that what you said is, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's good. Everyone doesn't respect authors in the in the world that we live in. That's what you're basically saying, and it's very true. I think that a lot of young writers or young people, they might have that idea that being a writer is something very cool or very nice, or that they might like to do it because it seems intellectual to them or all kinds of other things, yeah. which might be true. But really, if you're if you're in for it and you really love it and you're going to be a real artist with your, what you write, uh, you're going to suffer and you're going to have a lot of unhappiness as well as happiness. So that's part of the deal, and it's something that a lot, that's a, a lot of the reason why a lot of people don't do it, because mm -hmm. going through it year after year and, and having to sacrifice so much to be able to achieve those things or to write those books, there's a yeah. lot that, there's a lot that 
you sacrifice. Like I, do, I don't really live a normal life in a lot of ways. I gave up a lot of stuff in order to do those things. So people sort of gloss over it. It's a weird thing because everyone kind of admires art in our culture and everyone admires that stuff. But it doesn't let you do it. Yeah, but at the same time, yeah, it doesn't. The society is not lending itself to that, which which is fine because it filters out for people who are not really interested. In a way, that's good. But also, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not really that romantic. It's a tough it's a tough thing to do. It's like anything. Yeah. You want to do you want to do good in anything. It's tough, right? So yeah. You got to like push through. So exactly. I mean, many people. Like, I feel like even in filmmaking, even in any type of art, people are scared to go into it only because of the outcome or the negative outcome they might receive. Yeah. You no, know, but it's it's those type of people that actually take that leap forward. Yeah. They make our society better. Well, I mean, yeah, and it's also knowing that um, that you're going to fail and that you're going to get rejected and being exactly. strong, strong enough to take that. Like, you know, how do you think that it was for me when I first my, my first novel and I sent it to a lot of Asians and stuff? Yeah. No one liked it. They were like, what is this? And then, you know, years later, certain certain of the same people might come back to me and be like, oh, you know what, that, that was pretty uh, ahead of its time. And then you kind of, yeah. then you have to fight against, like, you know, all kinds of things. Like, you have to fight against being bitter. You have to fight against all kinds of other enemies that come from within you as well. So so it's uh, it's not easy. And it's something that people yeah. shouldn't, people shouldn't be scared of the challenge, but they should understand the challenge. So, yeah, yeah that's, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> what Because in Afghanistan, not many NGOs go there. Right. And we go into a place like Kandahar. Kandahar, you know, obviously it's like really packed and not many people go there. And we, we started this program uh, where we educate female doctors, give them a full scholarship. So in like four or five years, they come back and serve the community. We have like 17 students doing that right now. And you know, when people ask me like what we do, I tell them that they're like, wow, like you're working for an organization that's eventually going to, you know, help you know, females in Afghanistan, all types of males, you know, have, have doctors in Afghanistan that is so, like, few of in Afghanistan. So it, it's just, like, I'm just proud of being in this organization. I'm proud right. of conducting right. this interview with a, with a guy like you. And I'm, oh, I'm no, really no. honored. No, I'm really honored to be speaking to Thank you so much, man. That's, that's my honor. So, I mean, uh, yeah, it was uh, that's really good. You sound like you're doing great things, and, uh, you know, I'm glad to support it. Rasul is a good guy, so when he asked me about it, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rizzo is the man. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to be keeping in touch with you. Thank you once more for doing this interview. No problem, bro. You're welcome. You're welcome. It was nice no to chat to you. Yeah. Bye-bye, my friend. Have a good one. Peace. You too.